This key concept video is about the structure and function of carbohydrates and lipids. By the end of it, we will have covered the structure and function of carbohydrates, examples of key carbohydrates, condensation and hydrolysis reactions, structure and function of lipids, and examples of key lipids. Carbohydrates contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and their main role is to provide energy through respiration, the main substrate of respiration being glucose, a monosaccharide. Some polysaccharides also provide energy storage, for example glycogen and starch, and some have structural roles, for example cellulose in plant cell walls. Monosaccharides are the most basic unit of carbohydrates. They have the general formula CnH2NON. Hexoses, for example glucose, fructose and galactose, contain six carbon atoms. Pentoses, for example ribose and deoxyribose, have five carbon atoms. Glucose is a particularly important monosaccharide in nature. It can be completely broken down in aerobic respiration to form a large number of ATP molecules. It is the main product of photosynthesis and it is soluble, making it easy to transport. Glucose is also a very stable structure. Alpha and beta glucose molecules are different animas. They have the same molecular formula and same structural arrangement of atoms, except for the orientation of the hydroxyl group at the first carbon atom. In alpha glucose, the hydroxyl group is orientated downwards, where in beta glucose, it is orientated upwards. This difference results in different bond formations and so different overall structure and properties of the resulting polysaccharides. It also means they are hydrolyzed by different enzymes. Now let's look at disaccharides. Disaccharides are formed when two monosaccharides join together. Here are some examples. Maltose is formed from two glucose molecules. Lactose is made from glucose and galactose and sucrose is made from glucose and fructose. Note that although fructose forms a pentagon shape in its ring form, it is actually a hexosugar. Here is carbon 1, then carbon 2, 3, 4, 5 and finally carbon 6 here. But how do monosaccharides join together? Well, let's look at this diagram here. This shows two alpha glucose molecules. Here you can see the hydroxyl group on carbon 1 of this first glucose and here you can see the hydroxyl group on the carbon 4 on the second glucose molecule. This is where bond formation will occur between carbon 1 and carbon 4. The bond formed between monosaccharides is called a glycosidic linkage or bond. Because it is between the carbon 1 of one glucose and the carbon 4 of the second glucose, this is known as a 1,4 glycosidic linkage. Two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom from the original hydroxyl groups that are not used in the bond are released as a water molecule. Because water is given off, this is a condensation reaction. To split the maltose up to produce the original glucose molecules, water has to be added in a hydrolysis reaction. Hydro, water, lysis to split. The water molecules provide the hydrogen atom and the hydroxyl group that were lost during the condensation reaction. This reaction we see here is making a larger molecule from two smaller ones, so this is also known as an anabolic reaction and it requires an input of energy. Catabolic reactions break larger molecules down into smaller ones with the release of energy. More monosaccharides can be added to this maltose in the same way through condensation reactions to form a polysaccharide such as starch, which brings us very nicely onto polysaccharides. The storage carbohydrate of plants and animals are starch and glycogen respectively. Starch is made up of two different polysaccharides, amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is an unbranched polysaccharide made up of alpha glucose molecules joined together by alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages. This long amylose chain coils to form a more compact molecule. Amylopectin is also made up of alpha glucose molecules, but this time it is a branched polysaccharide, 
because as well as alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages, there are alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages. Together, these two molecules form starch. Starch is insoluble and the branching makes it more compact and easily broken down by the enzyme amylase. So this makes it an ideal storage carbohydrate of plants. Glycogen is a polysaccharide made up of alpha glucose molecules again. It is highly branched due to the numerous alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages. It is the major storage carbohydrate of animals and is ideal for this role as it is insoluble, inert and compact. It needs to be more highly branched than amylopectin as animals are more metabolically active, so need glucose to be released more rapidly when it is required. The more branches there are, the more ends there are for the enzymes to hydrolyse the glycogen. Cellulose is composed of beta-glucose molecules joined together by beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages. The beta-glucose molecules are alternately rotated through 180 degrees, thereby forming a straight, unbranched chain. Then, you can see here, many hydrogen bonds form between hydroxyl groups of different glucose molecules in the same chain, and also between adjacent cellulose chains, forming fibrils. Bundles of fibrils together form fibres, like string making up rope. This structure gives cellulose its strength to be the main structural component of the cell wall in plants. We have now come to the end of carbohydrates and can move on to the next group of biological molecules, the lipids. Lipids are not polymers as they are not made up of repeating monomer units. They are usually insoluble in water but soluble in less polar organic solvents such as ethanol. Lipids include fats, oils, steroids and waxes. Like carbohydrates they contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen but with less oxygen atoms than carbohydrates. We are going to look at triglycerides, phospholipids and steroids. Triglycerides are made up of three fatty acids attached to a glycerol molecule, as you can see here. This is a glycerol molecule, an alcohol. These are the three fatty acid molecules. Each fatty acid molecule is made up of two parts, the carboxyl group and a hydrocarbon chain. The hydrocarbon chain can be saturated or unsaturated. When there is one carbon-carbon double bond, they are called monounsaturated. If they have more than one double bond, they are polyunsaturated. Double bonds put a kink into the chain, which pushes the molecules apart, lowering their melting point and making the lipid more fluid. Lipids with many unsaturated fatty acids are usually oils, and are often found as energy stores in plants. Those with mainly saturated fatty acid tails are often fats and found as energy stores in animals. So how are triglycerides formed? Well, like polysaccharides, they are formed by the formation of covalent bonds, this time between the fatty acids and glycerol molecule via condensation reactions. During this reaction, three water molecules are released due to the three fatty acids forming covalent bonds, known as ester bonds, with the glycerol. Again, like with carbohydrates, a triglyceride can easily be broken back down into its constituent molecules by hydrolysis reactions, catalyzed by the enzyme lipase, thus making them good energy stores. As well as energy storage, triglycerides can be used for thermal insulation, protection of major organs, and buoyancy in aquatic mammals. Similar to triglycerides are the phospholipids. These have a phosphate group replacing one of the fatty acid tails. Here is the phosphate group. R represents choline. You can see it is charged so it is hydrophilic. The fatty acid tails are hydrophobic. Therefore phospholipids are amphipathic. This amphipathic property is important in the role of phospholipids in the cell membrane. The phospholipids orientate themselves in a bilayer with their phosphate groups facing outwards in the aqueous environment and the fatty acid tails protected in the centre. Fatty acids in phospholipids may still be saturated or unsaturated. Unsaturated fatty acids make a more fluid membrane as they push the molecules apart. 
organisms can control the fluidity of their membranes using this feature. Those that live in colder climates tend to have more unsaturated fatty acids, ensuring their membranes remain fluid in low temperatures. Cholesterol is a steroid and it has a completely different structure to triglycerides and phospholipids. It has a polar head group, a fused ring structure in the middle and a flexible non-polar tail down here. It is found in membranes with its polar hydroxyl group interacting with the phosphate heads and the hydrophobic middle and tail sitting between the fatty acid tails of the phospholipids. At higher temperatures, cholesterol reduces membrane fluidity by disrupting the phospholipids from moving too freely. At lower temperatures, cholesterol increases fluidity by preventing the phospholipid tails from packing too closely together. Cholesterol is also used to form the steroid hormones such as all oestrogens, including oestradiol, and testosterone. Steroid hormones can pass through the cell membrane to reach their target receptor site inside the nucleus. So now that we've looked at carbohydrates and lipids, the key points to take away are that condensation reactions are responsible for making larger molecules from smaller molecules, such as polysaccharides from monosaccharides and triglycerides from three fatty acids and glycerol. They result in the formation of covalent bonds. In carbohydrates, these are glycosidic linkages, and in lipids, they are ester bonds. Starch, made up of amylose and amylopectin, and glycogen are storage carbohydrates of plants and animals respectively. Both molecules are made of alpha-glucose and branches are formed by alpha-1,6 linkages. Cellulose is a structural carbohydrate and is made up of beta-glucose. Its strength is enhanced by hydrogen bonds between glucose molecules of the same chain and different chains. Phospholipids and cholesterol are amphipathic and this is really important in the structure of the cell membrane. The saturation of the fatty acid tails of the phospholipids and the presence of cholesterol help control the fluidity of the cell membrane.